Hey, this is Stacy and Megan. With another What We're Cooking and Eating Now mini episode. We share two of these short episodes every month in addition to our regular weekly episodes. And we give you a real-time rundown of what we're cooking for our families. Real time, even if it's cooking nothing. (laughs) (laughs) In each of these episodes, we'll walk you all the way through one recipe and then list five others. All in, you get six easy weeknight dinner ideas that we've tested. And you can use our ideas or avoid our fails and literally turn (laughs) these ideas into a meal plan for your week. We'll be sharing the links for all the recipes mentioned in our free community, which you can join by going to didn't I just feed you.com backslash community. All you have to do is enter your email, which we keep private and look out for our posts with all the what we're cooking and eating now details. All right, Megan, let's jump in. We're going to start with you. You're going to be the one to walk us through one full recipe this week. What did you cook since we've last spoken? Okay. I'm just going to be really transparent (laughs) and say that it has been a weird, hectic week. Brian's on a long stretch of working, so I'm solo parenting. It's deep baseball season, so we have had like it's spring. We'll have games scheduled. They get rescheduled because there's lots of rain. So like this week we had three baseball games. Three You're nights giving in me a row P- baseball games. PTSD. No, I don't. Am I? I'm no, not I shouldn't. To. I'm not trying to make light of PTSD. I am. No. I'm going to take that back. Roll the bat. But we're just starting baseball season this week. So Oliver has only had one practice. And the first game is this weekend. And I'm like, oh, here we go. Yeah. I get why people enjoy it. And sometimes I do too, but I'm more of a basketball mom. It's like you're in and out. It's like an hour, hour and a half. The game is fast paced, like watching (laughs) school aged and tween boys playing baseball is a little bit like watching paint dry to me. Sorry. I said it. It's okay. I am going to go opposite direction and tell you. I freaking love it. <laughs> That's <They're>, amazing. <laughs> I love that. It is such a mix of skill levels. Like we have a <laughs> yes. great infield. Infield players are killing it. And outfield players are like picking daisies oh, oh, and oh. digging up dirt. The only thing is it's a logistical nightmare. I like that yes. we have games on weeknights instead of on the weekend. And we occasionally have like a weekend practice. Okay. You like that? I do That's because the worst that means part the weekends me. are bad. Like if we had games all weekend, like the number of games that we have during the week, which is sometimes two, sometimes three, if we had those all weekend, we wouldn't get to do anything else. On oh the my weekends. gosh. I love weekend games. I feel like that gives us structure. It gives us something to do that the boys don't complain about because it's for them. Whereas like, let's go to a museum and it's like for two hours, I have to hear them complain. Yeah. It gets us outside. Also my kids, I actually, we don't get a lot of homework to be honest, but there's some, but they're like exhausted. Yeah. When they're weekday games, Oliver is like dead at the end. Yeah. We do run into that. And we also run into Ella does not enjoy going to the games. So we're all yeah. like, we're, tr- we're always trying yeah. to like uh, throw her off onto another family. Like she can go hang out at her friend's house instead. So it's all very, all to say, it's very hectic. There's a lot of like logistical things at play. Yes. And this weekend, I was like, you know what? We have a lot of leftover produce. We have a bunch of meat in the freezer. I'm not going to do a full grocery shop. I'm going to try to just cook from what we have on hand. I love that. But I do need to just like go off on a little story time okay. because I we had this thing over the weekend where I was like, Oh, we'll go to target. We'll get like the home products that we need. We'll get out of the house. Cause it was like this weird thing where there was a fire near our house and our road was shut ah, down. And so we couldn't get out. Yep. And I was like, okay, now we're going to get out to kind of like evening time. And I can grab the couple of grocery things that I need, like milk and cream cheese and bagels and stuff like that for breakfast. Uh, and both of my kids, my 10 and my seven year old had complete meltdowns in target. And I said, if it's we don't pull look. it together, look. <laughs> we're going to leave. And I think neither of that, because I've threatened that before and they've been, I've either been in a different mood where I'm like, it's okay. We'll go, we'll walk through it. But this time I was like, nope, I left the cart <laughs> in the middle of an aisle. I took them both by their hands. I wasn't yelling. I wasn't screaming. I was very calm, which is probably more scary yes, to them. It is. It is. And I was like, we're leaving. And we got in the car and it was like complete silence. And Emmett was like, 
are we going to get arrested because we left our car in the middle of Target? <laughs> <laughs> it's really cute. It's a tiny bit sad. It's a tiny bit sad. But it's super cute. I mean, I was like in a, it was like rage silence. And I was like, we're all going to be quiet while we drive home. And I'm, by the time we get home, I will come down from this. And then, so all that to say grocery shopping, this, my like attempts at grocery shopping this weekend Can I, were kind of disastrous. I'd like to tell you my very twisted takeaway from this story is Go that I it. need to employ rage silence more. Yeah. It's highly effective. It's high. It's, it's yeah, it's scared of I'm because I'm a yeller. Yeah. I run hot. And so. the thing is, <laughs> when you yell, then they feel like they have the permission slip to be 100%. upset. Yes. They're like, oh, you're yelling at me, cries. Yes. And it becomes like, all about how bad, bad we are. Yeah. Yes. 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 Rage silence. That's my takeaway. Now tell us what you ate. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am hot again for a recipe that I started cooking the when I did a Whole30 many years ago. I'm not, I'm not endorsing Whole30. I'm just endorsing this recipe. What words did you utter on Didn't I Just Feed You? I know. I know. <laughs> I don't like too. to talk about diets, but it's an egg roll in a bowl. I love the recipe. For, like You can find a recipe for egg roll in a bowl so many places, but I love Christine Gallery, who's a former guest her version on kitchen. I'm just going to like, you know, give the warning that it was part of a whole 30 series. So there's talk about, you know, how it's low carb, et cetera. Yeah. That's not of any matter to my family, but I like that it uses ground meat. You can use ground mm -hmm. beef or turkey or chicken or pork. We have a bunch of pork in our freezer. I think I mentioned this last time when I said I made chicken parm burgers and then I was like, actually, yes. they're pork parm. Burgers. Yes, totally. You still still working through that ground well, pork. Okay. Still working still through that working ground pork. So you just like cook it in a big so skillet, saute it with a little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. And then you throw in like either broccoli slaw or you could use cabbage and like, you know, carrot matchsticks, scallions, a bunch of garlic. Um, you can add like a little bit of soy sauce or tamari to the mixture and it all cooks really quickly. Like seriously, it takes like 15 minutes to make. But the thing I think is what makes this recipe superior to other egg roll in a bowl recipes is that there is a sauce. I would call this a yummy sauce because that's what I think of from like Japanese restaurants growing up, like hibachi res restaurants. But it's really just like mayonnaise and whatever hot sauce you love. You can use I've sriracha. I've never heard that term yummy sauce. Really? I feel like it's a whole thing. And like there are very elaborate yummy sauces where it's like mayonnaise, soy, you know, soy sauce, a little bit of sugar, some garlic chili paste, like it can range from it's two ingredients of mayonnaise and hot sauce to like very elaborate, slightly sweetened yummy Is sauces. Is this like, like Americans don't know, like a history yes. of it. I don't mean right yes. now. Yes. yes. Like yes. back in the 1950s or something, like Americans were like, what's that crazy sauce at the like exotic Chinese place. It's I know. Yummy. Well, Let's I've, call it yummy sauce. I wonder I if that's the history. Yeah. I don't know the full history, but okay. I associate it with hibachi style okay. restaurants. So I think it's like, a, it's based, it's probably, it is probably some sort of assimilation where yes. there was something else. Yeah. More delicious, but there's an interesting and then like, story in this. Yeah. We should, let's figure it out. And I would like to, I think that's really interesting. About it. I would say. So we did that one night for dinner this week. And again, it was something like I could cook really quickly before a later baseball game. And you could serve it over rice or rice noodles. We did not. We did like tortillas like and almost ate it like a like a mushu pork taco kind of style um and my kids were really into that they do not enjoy the yummy sauce the way i do and that's fine more for me okay what else did you eat okay uh, i feel like maybe the theme for the week is cabbage because not only was there cabbage in the egg roll in the bowl but there was uh we also used up a head of cabbage do you, i've talked about this before but i feel like anytime i buy a head of cabbage no matter how small i think it is or no matter how big it yes. actually is <laughs> even if i'm cooking with it like 
every night, I feel like it lasts for four <laughs> yeah. weeks. Right? You're like, so, oh, is there still a cabbage here? Yes. And I feel like you cooked something similar and mentioned it. I don't know what we're cooking and eating now, but basically roasted sausage and cabbage on a sheet tray. Like literally that's it. I let the sausage fat be what seasoned the cabbage. Although I did do a little bit of vinegar and salt and pepper after it came out of the oven. Did and then I cut the cabbage and I did cross like, like slices or did you shred so it? I had half a head of cabbage and I basically cut it into eight pieces. So four wedges and then cut the wedges Got it. in half across their length, almost like the presentation yeah. you see with iceberg in a wedge yes. salad. Um, but they do, they fall, which means like the tops get really brown because they're up high above everything else. And, and for the way my oven is like the hotter part of my oven is at the top anyways. Um, so they get nice and brown and then everything underneath gets like really tender and it all kind of falls apart and becomes this like lush bed of roasted cabbage for the sausage to go on. As you might imagine, my kids don't think roasted cabbage is as delicious as I think it is. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. So I also um, did a sheet tray of tater tots from Frozen and I had impulse bought pretzel, soft pretzel bites, which I found in like the bread section at my grocery store. Love. Yeah. So they had sausage, apples, tater tots, and uh, pretzel bites. I did put a couple pieces of sausage on their plate or not sausage. I did cabbage. put a couple of pieces of cabbage on their plate. They were still there when we cleaned up dinner. <laughs> so, but I really enjoyed that. Dinner. Do they like raw? Like could another, I love your tater tot idea, but could another thing be like, if your kid likes a coleslaw, like cut up your cabbage, leaving just like one third or one fourth yes. and then cut that raw and put that on their plate shredded. One thousand yeah. percent. And like, I think I mentioned we did black bean burritos recently and had like a cabbage and carrot slot. Still, that's the same <laughs> head of cabbage. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> and they loved that. Okay. Or like they like the broccoli slaw, which is like more broccoli and less cabbage um raw or cooked yep but for some reason if you just also cabbage like it was green cabbage which is not very colorful i don't know it just wasn't enticing yeah to them at all but yes you could totally turn a portion into just like shredded slaw instead nice okay. or you could do the same concept with another veg you could do cauliflower which they love roasted cauliflower or broccoli i think the idea is just like sausage and a longer like a heartier vegetable that can roast alongside the sausage got it and lots of like i that's the thing where i want like just a little side of mustard mustard but i wish i had made like a mustard sauce yes. that would have made it come all together like so creamy mustard sauce with a little yes. bit of lemon zest to make it bright and a lot yeah. of black pepper 100 percent. Yeah. yes okay last thing is so sausage and sheet pans are the theme of my week i like it we did sheet pan teriyaki chicken wings which i didn't use a recipe for this i just like had a bottle of the, is it soy vey? Yeah. Ter their teriyaki sauce. I, so I just roasted I wings on a sheet tray, on a cooling rack actually, and did the tip the tip that we talked about on Reels recently where I put the, the wings on a rack. Yep. So they get crispy on all sides. And then underneath the rack, I did snap peas, carrot coins, because mm -hmm. I had them, they needed to be used up, and broccoli, and then just served that over plain jasmine rice for dinner one night this week. Did um, you that, cut the carrot coins or did you buy them pre-cut? Oh, no, they were definitely pre-cut. Okay. We're talking about like, we're reaching into the depths of my produce drawer because I didn't really get my grocery shop done. Now my, right, we, we heard. <laughs> um, my kids don't like cooked snack peas or cooked carrots. Yeah. But I would love, they would love if I just did wings and gave them raw carrots and snap peas. They'd be psyched. Yeah. Awesome. The nice thing about doing the sheet pan cooling rack trick is that you could like cook them less if you just wanted to like quickly steam them. Cause yeah. I think that is objectively an issue with snap peas and carrots is when they get roasted for too long and they're like so soggy, totally. weird, especially snap peas if they have like any sort of peas in them and then you get like kind of a crunchy pea but the outside is yeah, squishy totally. 
Yes. Anyways, that's what I cooked this week. What did you cook this week? So let's just fly through it. This week, uh, I think the last time we spoke, I had mentioned that my kids made a post-vacation meal plan and I had made carbonara, but I hadn't made bolognese and carbonara was Isaac's pasta choice and bolognese was Oliver's. So he made real sure that I was going to make bolognese this week. (laughs) (laughs) So I did. I'm going to share two recipes in the links. I'm going to share the one for my uh, chicken meat sauce made with chicken thighs that I love, 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 but definitely feels a little bit more like a weekend meal, but I just want people to have that recipe. I'm also going to share your instant pots, um, pasta and meat sauce, but I made neither of those. (laughs) (laughs) I did a Here. version of the Instant Pot one. It's okay. funny because I asked Oliver, I had time, I was like, do you want me to make the meat sauce in a pot or in the Instant Pot? And he said, I think I want you to make the Instant Pot because the pasta gets more cooked with the meat. There's something about yeah. the texture. I call it Chef Boyardee texture. Which I do is, too. Right? But I love it. You, you're you saying it like that's a bad thing. And I'm saying it like, yeah, no, I, good. I like it. It's like a time and a place. Like <laughs> yes. it gets, because all that starch goes into the sauce and then also like makes the outside of the pasta, even if you cook it till al dente, like it's still kind of a little bit softer on the outside than when you bite into it. Right. So he asked for that. And so I just, I just riffed. Uh, And I didn't have a lot because I hadn't gone food shopping. I grabbed the ground meat from my freezer. So I used red wine as the main flavoring agent Mm. because I didn't have a lot of stuff. I just had like, I didn't even have a Rayo's or a jar of good marinara. I had to use canned tomatoes. So I really needed to figure out a very like quick and easy way to build flavor and a little red wine to deglaze the onions and then another splash of red wine at the end just to kind of boost the flavor. It worked really nicely. And with it, I air fried broccoli for the first time. Okay. And it was not good. Oh, no. Say, because I love roasted broccoli when it gets I love roasted broccoli. Everybody was like, you should just do this in the oven. This was not good. Yeah. The the floret, like the top of the florets started to get crispy, like they were going to burn because they were like fried. And that was nice. But the stems still felt crunchy. They were like cooked on the outside, but they were crunchy on the inside. It didn't work. I also didn't look up a recipe. I just guessed like 415 minutes or something like that. I mean, that seems like it would be right. Tossed it in olive oil, salt and pepper. And everybody, entire family was like, nope, use the oven next time. So curious to hear from our community if they've had luck. Like, what do you do when you air fry broccoli? Yeah. I also want to shout out, I love Ben Mims book, Air Fryer Every Day. He has a whole chart in there of like vegetable and it's cooking time and temperature, which is incredibly helpful. If you are going to be air frying a lot of vegetables or at least experimenting. Yeah. I don't know. It just didn't work. Okay. Made cheese arepas still like coming down off of our trip, craving some tastes of Colombia. Arepas are actually surprisingly easy to make. I know Mm -hmm. it seems like it might not be. And it definitely takes, like, it takes some, if not time, like, mental stamina. (laughs) Like, I can't explain it. But, like, even just taking out masa and adding water and using your hands to make a dough just psychologically feels like you're doing more work. Even though it literally comes together, it's, like, literally masa and water. And it takes all of, like, seven to ten minutes to make the dough. And then they fry up really quickly, too. I get it if it feels like too much. But they were really delicious. Um, I keep masa in my freezer because I don't use it quite enough. Uh, and it just stays fresh there. And I just have a big bag. And it was delicious. To make those cheese arepas, I had found Oaxacan cheese and cotija cheese at Whole Foods. And instead of just grating and crumbling a little bit, I grated the whole ball of Oaxacan cheese. I crumbled up the whole round of cotija. And then I had way more cheese than I needed. <laughs> and so I u- I saved it in a bag and I made from What's Gabi Cooking... I, she has a recipe for Mexican corn and quinoa salad and Yum. it calls for a bunch of grated cheese. So I already had that ready to go and waiting. So 
this was like a really nice pairing. I didn't plan it that way because I was still like post vacation mode, kind of like flying by the seat of my pants, but it worked out really nicely. I had some chicken breasts, did a cilantro lime marinade and had the quinoa salad with the chicken and just like sliced avocado. Oh my gosh. That sounds like a perfect summer meal. It was really nice. And it was, yeah. it, it's so not summer here yet, but yeah. I know. <laughs> and then also I forgot to say with the cheese arepas, I just got some fresh chorizo meat, like ground chorizo and I browned it and I did quick pickled onion, which I also used in that other meal with the cilantro lime chicken. And I basically like cut up avocado, hearts of palm, pickled onion, and then I put the chorizo on top of the arepas. That's what made it a meal because arepas alone is not substantial enough for my family. Right. Even if they're cheese filled. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because there's not that much cheese. I will tell you that Oliver and I were working on it together. We had a really hard time getting as much cheese as we wanted into the arepa (laughs) because I was trying to make it small. Yeah. And then you like put a, you dent a little hole and then you fill the hole with cheese and then you kind of fold the dough around it and then re-flatten it. And we kept putting in so much cheese. <laughs> we couldn't get so the they were dough like the cheese. Yes, totally. <laughs> it wasn't enough. So I think that's more a problem with us than it is with the. <laughs> yeah. And your love of cheese, which I, I was laughing when you were talking about the Oaxaca and Cotilla, because I know from off recording that you have uh, overrun of cheese at the moment. I'm thinking about how you made bolognese. And so you have yes. like Parmesan uh, Parmesan, and then d- didn't you use Romano last yes. week when yes. you were making carbonara? Totally. And, like, so I have both of those. Cheese. I have Oaxaca cheese. cheese. I have <laughs> Cotija cheese. I had sliced pepper jack, which I always have. I had feta, which I always have. Oh, and then I have, I want to make pizza this weekend. So I have like multiple bags. I like using a combination of the shredded pizza combo and then also getting fresh mozzarella and slicing it. So I have two bowls of fresh mozzarella and two bags. (laughs) <laughs> pizza cheese. You all basically in my have a cheese shop. I basically have a cheese right shop. Now. Oh, and then I saw Mini Breeze in the market, and you have shown those before. I love those. I bought those too because I was like, oh, I never see these. I'm going to have Mini yeah. Breeze. Make yourself a little, I make myself little snack platter lunches with them. Oh, that's so smart. Like a single serve cheese plate. Yeah. And I haven't okay. known what to do. Because you know, next time we talk, I'm going to want to know what you did with all your cheese. <laughs> <laughs> deal Better deal um our listeners will probably have some ideas for you if you don't have any uh which is a good segue to say this bi-monthly series is thanks in part to the generous support of our didn't i just feed you supporting membership so a big shout out and thank you to them yeah you can find out more about becoming a supporting member at didn't i just feed you.com backslash community and hey if it's not the right time for that for you don't forget you can get all the links to this week's what we're cooking and eating now by joining the free section of our community a huge thank you also to our editor samantha gatsik thank you all for listening stay sane and well fed until next time